So our first speaker for today is uh, Dr. Kyle, and I think um, there is no other speaker who would be more appropriate for this uh, topic, uh, which is history of multiple myeloma and monoclonal gammopathies. Dr. Kyle, over the past half a century, has witnessed remarkable progress uh, in multiple myeloma and other uh, related disorders. And uh, I, without much ado, I'll give the podium to Dr. Kyle. Welcome, Dr. Kyle. Well, good morning. Thank you very much, uh, Dr. Kapoor. It's a uh, pleasure to be here today, and especially to talk a little bit about uh, multiple myeloma and the monoclonal gammopathies in the past. Instead of uh, 25 minutes, I wish you'd given me 125 minutes, but that's not possible. These are my disclosures. And we will begin with, as far as I know, the best well-documented uh, patient with multiple myeloma, a resident of London. Uh, Sarah Newberry was a 39-year-old woman who in 1840 uh, presented with severe back pain. Two years later, while her husband carried her from in front of the hearth to her bed, both femurs snapped and broke. And then, in 1844, she was admitted to St. Thomas Hospital in London, where she was treated with orange peel, rhubarb pills, and fortunately, opiates. She uh, died uh, uh, five days later, and uh, at autopsy, her red cells in the bone, or her plasma cells, or cells in the bone marrow, resembled those of plasma cells. This is a photograph of the patient, and unfortunately, you do not need to have x-rays to recognize the multiple fractures that she had. The second patient was uh, Mr. Thomas Alexander McBean, who is better known. Uh, this was a respectable tradesman, as you can see, age 45, who developed weakness and fatigue.